what is up my little ones it is you like smasher here um here's another sketch st stories now i'm gonna take a little bit more time to explain or just you know give some details so back in the day here's just like a little fact back in the day um i tried to do this but with like recording my um sketchbook like right you can see right here this is like an actual recording um i tried to do that but it was terrible i mean that will explain why it's called sketched stories because it's kind of building on that and yes my laptop still doesn't work don't have enough money to get fixed so yeah that's pretty bad but i'm still bringing you another story um didn't get any uh comments like for featuring stories or anything uh, but that's okay, it's the first episode, so, you know. Um, yeah, you guys, if you were here last time, you know that I tell a story and I draw pictures. Um, yeah, again, practice for my grown-up career, because, you know, movies, yeah, like last time. Okay, well, let's get on with the story. Woo! Okay, so our story begins in a lab that belonged to a scientist named, um, let's call him Dave. Now, Dave was in the middle of making a container of some kind that could, um, cure diseases and, um, in a certain cases, preserve life. Now, here's how it worked. First, there's the container. You get into the container for a certain amount of time given your prescription by a doctor then you get out and BAM you are cured. The container he's using for this project is gonna be bubbles cause who doesn't like bubbles? Now he had lots of failed attempts but at one point after many many he had finally found a breakthrough and he thought he was successful now all there was left to do was to test it. Now, just for extra details, Dave had an assistant named, um, let's just call him Mr. Bill. And he was a very mellow guy. Now, Dave, um, he, uh, poisoned his finger, infected it just for this occasion. Yeah, he was, um, he was a bit of an idiot, but... It was all for science, so yeah, it didn't really matter. Now comes the glory moment. He sticks his finger, his infected finger, into the bubble. He sticks it in, and in, and it, wait. Oh god, he, he feels something. He looks down. <gasps> oh god! The bubbles didn't preserve life. THEY MADE LIFE! WHAT HAPPENED?! There were all types of people. They had, like, carts and food and crap. And, and, you, and then they had colored skin and stuff. And some had, like, three eyes and others had nubs and some were just normal. You didn't... This is weird. What the frick? As amazing as this discovery pretty much was, he did not, it was a, it was pretty much a failure, so he was, he was pretty sad. Now, Dave, he was pretty disappointed in himself, so, you know, he didn't want to kill all of them, obviously, but, so he locked him in, um, a little f freezer, I guess, instead. And he was just about to walk out of the room, until... He heard something that would change his life forever. A beautiful song. He didn't know where it came from. He assumed it came from one of the bubbles. And it did. He started walking into the freezer. And all the little creatures followed him. Or even jumping between bubble bubbles. Like almost losing their lives because they couldn't survive in the oxygen. 
just to see where the song was coming from. And there it was. A beautiful young girl in one of the bubbles. Now, she was pretty dang cute, I'm not gonna lie. Well, you guys can be the judge of that. But, she was there, playing her music. And he and Dave got to know each other. They actually were pretty good friends, and she told them about all types of stuff. Um, Dr. Bill, but Dr. Bill kind of nagged at him, telling him, Dude, we gotta write this stuff down, or whatever. But Dave just kind of shoved him off, still listening to that beautiful music and her beautiful voice. They were perfect together. After the him and the little girls, um, well not the little girls, but the girls get together, something nagged at him. He had to meet this girl in person. They, no, not behind a bubble. He needed to meet her. So... So, he and Mr. Bill got to work on a machine. A machine that could shrink them so he could go into the bubble. Now, if he were to go to bubble in his actual size, he probably would pop it. But if he were small, he could, you know, go in and it wouldn't pop it because the, bu the bubble structure is stronger because of a f thing he used for it. And, yeah, I could sit here and talk about the math of this thing like all day but or we could just get into it anyway at one point he was successful and now all that was left to do was to test it he was ready for whatever this machine was gonna do so he was just standing there all like confident and he was about to test it in three two one he turned small now of course he didn't think this through because instead of shrinking, like, very small onto the ground, he shrank in midair. And he went plummeting a thousand feet, and then he fell into one of the bubbles. So, here his quest begins. Now, things were getting kind of weird, because he there were weird animals trying to eat him everywhere. He didn't know it was safe to eat, either, and he didn't know where to go. But he plummeted through it. And he finally met her at one point. They finally said hi in person. And it was great. But then they felt a wind. Like a very powerful wind f sucking on them. And he looked and there was a hole slowly going into the bubble. There was like, it was slowly popping. And what did he see through the hole? Mr. Friggin' Bill, that traitor. Uh, so, lots of stuff was happening at once. First, he had to, like, cover, you know, the girl's mouth because she wasn't used to the oxygen outside of the bubble. Um, he still had to process that his assistant was betraying him, and he had to jump through the bubbles. He was going super fast while he was popping them all behind him. And then he finally get on the ground, and Mr. Bill grabbed at them. Dave w yelled at him. He's like, why are you doing this? And then Mr. Bill was like, you want to know why? Because you've been spending way too much time being stupid. Okay? You have made a new species and you're not even looking into it. You think of it as a failure. And then, when you finally end up talking to them, you just talk to this girl. Okay? It's, it's just stupid. I'm done with you holding me back. You're... You're an idiot, okay? So, I'm gonna kill you, and I'm going to pursue, um, I'm gonna pursue different things on my own without you. Now, I can kill you and the girl, or I can, I can just kill you, and I'll make a bubble for the girl, so the girl can breathe. Of course, Dave said, okay, okay, just, just protect the girl. And, okay, so he makes a bubble, and she puts her in the bubble, and he's just about to squeeze Dave's head into a bloody pulp, and then... Oh, God, what happened? And then you he sees the girl with the shrink ray. 
her, her hands outside the bubble and she's like pulling the trigger with her tiny little hands. And Bill is shrunken now and Dave and the girl are like ganging up on him and looking at him and he's like, heh, 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 oh, oh, yeah. Yup, they beat the crap out of them. Dave and the girl live in the bubble. They just let the bubble take them wherever it wants to go. And they s bubble around the world, I guess. Yup. Very, very happy and... Alright, my real ones. Um, thank you for watching the second episode of Sketched Stories. Um, like I said, um... Maybe put a story down in the comments below of your own that you just make up or that has happened in your real life. Or send me um, a suggestion for what genre you want the next story to be. Or like like um, like medieval or something like that. Um, uh, what else was I going to say? Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, well... Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye-bye, my riddle ones.